Well, um, let me see now. I know that you're uh, you're in incredible shape right now, and you're 50 years old, probably in some of the best shape of your life. And um, what do you think the of the importance of working out and, and eating healthy is uh, to maintain your um, you know your your life and and to uh, to be able to stay in shape as you get older? Bob, I think that's the great thing about fitness. Um, when when you you're talk about fitness and the, and the two things that stick out to me the most important and this we, one of the things to do life you want to hope you have some fact about behind it there's two facts behind fitness and you tell me a story about your father and I think he's a testimony to it is that when you work out you're going to live longer we know that okay and you're going to do things life and longer that you want to do <clears throat> those two things to me interest me in fitness right away uh I think too, Bob, we all remember that silly little book that we all saw one time about the guy getting his sand kicked in the face. I'm not exaggerating. Yeah. I saw that at a very young age and I wanted from that time on to, uh, you know, to have muscles. And when you were that young, that's all you could say that you wanted to do. I want to look like that. I want muscles, you know. And if working out could do that for me, that's what I want to do. So I guess like in the third or fourth grade, I've wanted to do that since. But the two things that would stand out, you live longer, you do things life longer. I saw a medical journal the other day. They did autopsies of people that ran and worked out, ran and just worked out, and people that didn't either. The people that did both, their internal organs were somewhere 10 to 20 years younger than people who didn't either. Wow. Wow, well, that's, a, that's a testament right there. I mean, I've been told that uh, I've heard some people say, look at if you had a car and you wanted to make that car last 90 years, are you going to put all the crap in it or are you going to put just the best stuff in it? So. Well, now, Bob, the thing about fitness is it's not just going to the gym. You made a good point there. It's what you put into your body. Uh, and, uh, man, if people understood what I had to eat in a day and, and the boredom eating the same old things. thing is, Bob, there's, there's the thing about being in shape, there's not a lot of... Um, Things that are we we don't know things like that. I talk to a I talk I get the chance Bob to talk to some of the greatest minds in the medical field about the human body. And I talk was talking to a physician the other day. He said, you know, he goes, and I'm not putting myself forward, but he says, you know, talking to you, he said he goes, you know, about as much of the human body as the doctor does. But the thing is, the difference between me and you, and I know for sure, school said because I went to school to learn it. The difference is, difference is, is that I don't have the discipline to eat and do the things that I know that it'll take me to look and really be the person I want to be. That's the difference, Bob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of it is the discipline. That's the thing. I mean, a lot of people know, I guess, and then and uh, just don't want to take those steps to do what they have to do. Um, now. Um, I know you've done some self-defense before. I think you did Taekwondo when you were younger. And uh, mm -hmm. what do you think of the importance of knowing some self-defense in uh, martial arts, even for women and for uh, and for people as they get older or for the youth? The thing about, uh, there's so many things about um, Taekwondo. We could call it karate. We call it MMA. We call it Jiu-Jitsu or whatever. Um, for sure, karate and Taekwondo. The thing I found it to be the most important, one of the couple things important for me, and I had both my my sons to do it at an early age too. But we'll start with the basic things it do for you. It teaches you how to use your left, if you're right-handed or right left-handed. It teaches how to use both hands and both feet equally. So if you start at a young age like I did, third, fourth, fifth grade, and carry on with it as you get over, it's going to follow you through all sports, Bob. And when I played baseball from my youngest days in baseball, I was a switch hitter. I, I could uh, I could shoot basketball left or right-handed. Those are the things right there. That's for sure it does for you, for sure. Another thing I know it does for sure, I was a skinny little kid with a, a you, know, uh, you know, not a lot of confidence. It gives you a lot of confidence. And I think most of them, important at all, the thing it taught me and it follows me every day of my life even today, it just taught me self-discipline. And without a doubt, those three things for sure. Oh, great, yeah. You make a lot of good points. Now, um, I know it's been a long time, Sid, but um, um, one question for you is, uh, do you remember what your uh, what your first actually professional match was like? You, um, can you explain a little about that to us? I can, Bob. It was, um, 
I was sitting at home. I was still in wrestling school, and um, I can say this now, but then they didn't want you to know that wrestling wasn't real, okay? And so I was at home eating supper. My karate teacher was named Toto Yamamoto, who's a legend in this area. He called me on the phone. He said, Isaiah said, I said, yeah, he goes, you want to wrestle to, or you want to be a bodyguard tonight? I said, yeah, it's Mid-South Coliseum. Bob, that's the biggest accomplishment at that time that anybody came out here could ever uh, accomplish. I said, sure. So I got over to the Coliseum. And um, they came to me and said, okay, we need we need you to be a, uh, uh, what, at that point would be, we need you to be in the corner tonight with the fabulous ones against the sheep herders. And you're going to be like, you know, and the sheep herders corner was going to be John Boyd and you're both going to sit in chairs and this is your, your object. If he gets out of that chair, you would go over and put him back in the chair. And I'm thinking, okay, and you're going to tell me this is all not real. And uh, <laughs> you no, know, really, I said, you're going to tell me the rest of it. And I, they made me sit there, Bob, all night long against that wall. And uh, then every once in a while I come out and go, okay, you know what to do? I'm going, yeah. Okay, when he gets, if he gets out of that chair, what you do is you go over there and you make him get back in that chair. I said, okay. And again, Bob, think, okay, tell me the rest, you know, and they didn't. So when it come time for the mat, we go out to the mat, they had me sit down in a little looming folding chair. And uh, they said, now, if he, come, if he gets up, you got to get over it, put him back in that seat. You know, I'm telling the boy, Bob, if you don't know, this is one of the most scariest human beings in the world. Uh, he was a monster of a person. <laughs> uh, his face, his, 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 his everything about him. And uh, he looked like Ox Baker, if you know who that is. Um, and when he stands up, Bob, I'm thinking, okay, I, I gotta go. And when I stand up, he sits right back down. Wow. And th that happened the whole night. He never got out of his seat. They never <laughs> put me to position to do anything, and they never smartened me up. Wow. That was a pretty cool first night deal. Yeah, that's an incredible story. 